Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. My name is Sanjeev Bhani. I am here as a real estate investor bringing you real estate property management and construction content to help you learn the markets and invest better over time. Welcome to sunny California in the background. So today we're actually going to be going over short-term rentals versus mid-term rentals versus long-term rentals and what's going on with these short-term rentals and is it still worth it? And let's hop right into it, right? So over the couple of years that we've seen Airbnb hit that boom, a lot of people have really been looking at, well, now this is a really great investment opportunity because I can take a property where I was earning $2,000 a month and earn $4,000, $6,000, $8,000, $10,000 a month from this property. And that's really good, right? Now, the difference there is that, again, this is now becoming more of a very active investment versus a passive investment, right? You have to be able to turn that property. You have to be able to keep your standards high. You have to be able to make sure that those reviews come in and look really good. And there are people that can help you do that, but a lot of people are trying to do that on their own. And you may be some kind of really smart engineer, but you may not know how to take care of people. You may not know how to have really good hospitality and things like that. And because of that, you can see that this can become a very difficult investment, right? So a lot of people now over the years, because you've started to see now even that headache compounded by the fact that cities, municipalities, places like that do not want short-term rentals or they have regulations on short-term rentals, that now this is becoming even more of a problem. And so because of that, now you're starting to see, well, problems compounded, problems compounded, and people are now starting to say, well, maybe this isn't worth it. And when they're looking at that, they're now looking into what's called midterm rentals. Excuse me. Midterm rentals are essentially a, plat not a platform, but a way of being able to have a tenant in your property. This tenant is not going to stay for a long time, but they are not going to stay for a night, right? You still have to have the amenities for them. You still have to make sure everything is kept up. So everything that you might have learned through that Airbnb model can now be transfigured into this midterm model. And you can also now start to have lower operational costs because these people are staying a little bit longer. You're not having to clean the unit every other day or every other week or whatever it is, or every other weekend, excuse me. You're also seeing that you don't have to have the compliance and regulations that you do with the short-term rentals because they're not under the same rules that they are with a lot of places, you can have a midterm rental and not be under that ruling of the short-term rental or the not having a short-term rental. You have shorter vacancy rates as well, because with that vacancy, now let's say that somebody comes in, they're gone in two or three days. Again, you have another person, they're gone in two or three days. Again, you have another person, they're gone in two or three days. With a midterm rental, generally these people are going to be there for at least a couple of days, weeks, months at a time. So for example, I have a client of mine that basically did a midterm rental. They have a tenant in their property. That tenant was supposed to stay only for a few months. They're paying an increased rent because they're only staying for a few months. And then that tenant now has been with them for three years because he his contract keeps getting extended with the company that he's with. And so they're earning a steady income. Their vacancy has been low. Their cost to take care of the property has been low. And so they're able to really take advantage of the profitability of this because they're also getting a higher than market rent. So a lot of people are now starting to look at this when people are traveling a lot as far as their work, nurses, CEOs, doctors, different things like that. And so when you are doing that kind of thing, it does bring a lot more stability. Now, the thing is, is, well, how do we keep that stability going, right? Because that stability can be the difference between profitability and non-profitability. And a lot of times when people are buying these properties, they're not buying these properties thinking, well, worst case, I'm going to have to do a long-term rental. And if they have to do a long-term rental, that's going to put them in a negative cash flow situation, which is really bad for a lot of investors because they just don't have that cash to be able to pull and put into the property, right? So now you're looking at, oh, well, midterm. Well, midterm rentals are covering that middle ground where it's we're not earning as much as we are on the short-term side, but we're not making as little as we would have on the long-term side. And we're not having all of the operational expenses that we might have had on the short-term side. So we're able to keep that profitability and keep it higher than we would if we had a long-term rental. Now, in my opinion, when you're still buying these properties, you want to be able to say, I know if I end up having to rent this home at a long-term rental rate, I will be able to at least break even or cover the negative on the property comfortably, right? Because that essentially then would be the worst case scenario. From there, you can say, well, I can go in and I can 
create a place where I can have a midterm rental and I know that I'm going to make a little bit more than that long-term rental, even more stability. Okay. Now I know that I can go into a short-term rental, make even more money than I would in the midterm rental and now even more stability, right? So this is the ideal scenario. But if you're purchasing the property just for the idea that I'm going to make $5,000 a month on this property, the payment is going to be $4,000 a month on this property. And now I have this really great property in the middle of LA that's going to be so full all the time. And then you have a slow market. This is going to hurt you over the long term, right? So again, this is the way that we want to look at investing. It's not that whether this is the new holy grail or that is the new holy grail, because obviously, as we saw with Airbnb and short-term rentals, that once people start to do that on mass scale, there's going to be regulation. That regulation is going to stop people from doing it. So then we move into a different market and that's going to cause problems over the long term. With real estate investing, obviously, we want to have a property and real estate investing is more of a long term game versus a fix and flip kind of game. Right. And even fix and flip can be a little bit longer term than some of these short term rentals. <laughs> so that's the biggest thing is when you are investing again, you just want to be looking at what is going to give me the best profit over the longest period of time. Right. And if I can have that in a stable fashion, then that's going to be a good investment. Right. It's not that I need to get rich tonight. It's that I, it's not that I need to follow the trend of the day. It's that I want to make sure that I have more and more and more different options for stability over time. Right. And as long as I have that, I know that this property will continue to pay me into the future, which is what we really want. So thank you for watching. I'll hopefully see you on the next one. Hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, comment if you have anything to say, if you're missing any content and you want to see different stuff, hit me with a comment and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Take care.